Oh, they tell me of a home for me on the skies. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. couldn't get past the thought of homecoming and today that's where we're going to be if you'll turn with me to the book of Luke in the 15th chapter and the 11th verse and by the way if you've not looked at your bylaws and constitution very we're set up in such a manner uh, that no one thing has too much power because absolute power absolutely corrupts and so, understand that. Things have to be done in order. Sometimes they're a little bit boring but uh, in the events that we do it, but they have to be done. They have to be done. So the book of Luke in the 15th chapter and the 11th verse says this. And he said, a certain man, did I turn on my mic ever? I did, didn't I? Okay. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followeth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took the journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with, is that riotous? Living. And... Uh, he had spent all and there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into the fields to feed swine and he would have feigned to have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat 
and no man gave unto him, and he and he finds himself without, then he becomes unth Woo. and no man gave unto him, and he finds himself without, and he became thankful again. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father. And he will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring upon his hand and shoes upon his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and eat and let us eat and be merry. And this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found and they began to be merry. You know, I have to say every time I have preached this uh, this set of scripture over the years, which is many, I thought four or five times different titles that I had as I was sitting there reading that. And, uh, but it's always been hot and heavy. But this morning, it's, it's just blanket easy. But I, for the vast majority of us here today, these few set of scripture really hits home. I mean, it really does. I said for the vast majority of us here today, this set of scripture really hits home. Because spiritually speaking today, we can identify with this young man. We know what it is like to feel the Father's goodness and his love and his joy and his peace. We know what it's like to eat at the Father's table, to break the bread of life and the Word of God. You know, especially, you know, when we were young Christians, and, and I don't mean that it should not never lose anybody, but it was all new to us. And, and it was just so... We know what it's like. We know what it's like to feel the comfort and, and the confidence and the safety of being in the presence of the Father's arms. We know what that's like. Think about that. Like, the, the time you really felt just this, this like the Lord was, was just right there. We know what that's like. For the vast majority of us today, sometime in our Christian life, amen, it's sad to say, but we know what it's like to waste his goodness and his mercy and his grace and all those things. Amen. By for for many Christians, Amen, by getting back into things they don't need to be getting into. Getting out of the house of the Lord, not being in the place that they ought to be with God. And the sad thing is, too many of us know what that's like sometime in our Christian life. We can identify with this young man. Too too many of us today, amen, uh, can remember his goodness and his love and his peace, amen, by wasting it, by turning back to the things of this old world that we shouldn't have been in. Sometimes didn't even realize that we was there. Somebody better say amen right on that one. And in the midst of this old sinful world, too many of us can identify, amen, with uh, the troubling world finally getting a hunger for his goodness because this whole world is mean. Finally getting a hunger for his goodness again, his mercy and his peace. Because, you know, we, we forget somehow, you know, and, and we get, get in a mess. And, and, and I thank God. I thank God. Amen. I got saved when I was 12 years old and me and the Lord went back and forth a little bit to the age of 19 and I've not turned my back one drop since that day. 
But I can remember, amen, and the shame that I felt because of where I looked up and found myself. And I can identify, I can identify with this young man. Amen. I was looking around and finally coming to myself just as this young man did. Coming to myself and say, what in the world am I doing in all this mess? When I could be back at my father's house breaking the bread of life, feeling his goodness and his joy and his peace. I know what it's like to feel that. I know what it's like to sit down to the Word of God and enjoy it. You see, every message, pay attention to this. You've heard me preach this message sometime over the time. Every, every message is either a consolation or a conviction, whether it's salvation Amen, the rapture of the church, whatever it is, every message to somebody is either consolation or conviction. If you were your near need to be with God when you hear the message of salvation, glory to God, even though you've heard that message a hundred billion times, amen, the joy of the Lord are to strike up in you that you know him. If it don't, you got something to worry about. When you hear about the rapture of the church, you, your hope should be so much in that. It should be just such a comfort to you to be reassured of that. That's what the Bible said. Comfort one another with these words. But if you're lost, it's a conviction. If you're not where you need to be with God and somebody talks about the rapture of the church, it can be a great conviction. Somebody say amen. It's one of the two. But I can, I, I, with all of us today, we can, so many of us, this vast majority that's in here, we can remember that. And I don't have a long message here today. These three pages of notes, but that don't mean a, a hill of beans. Amen. When we finally come to ourselves and realize what we need to do, that we need to turn to God and repent of what we have done. Because how many of you know when you get saved, you're not your own, you've been bought with a price? Amen. Amen. Praise God. And when we, we, we turn back and begin to do what we need to do, we, we went back on the contract. Amen. We become a son of God. Amen. God never leaves man, somebody say amen, amen. but man leaves God. My Bible tells me if you continue. A lot of people got that wrong. But scripturally, I'm right. And I can prove it. If you continue. Now, I, I'm here to tell you when you get there and you realize, well, all of us here today, we, we, there's most of us, I'll guarantee you, in our Christian life can really say this hits home with us. And we realize, amen, where we are, that we need to repent. And I've done lost my place in my notes, but that's okay. Praise the Lord. And thank, thank God that we know that you and I today can repent. We can feel His goodness. Again, we get a desire, a hunger for it. Amen. We get a desire to break that bread of life. Amen. But thank God. All I got to say is thank God. That when I come to myself, at least I'm smart enough like that prodigal son, amen, to start home. Praise God, like so many of us can identify today. Amen. When we got home, the Father was awake. Thank God. And looking. Thank you, Jesus. And thank God we did repent. Yes, Lord. And thank God 
He did wash all that old filthiness off of us where we've been down an old pig pen of this old life and we've made white as snow. Though your, Isaiah 1 and 18, though your sins be red like crimson, yet shall they be white as snow. Amen. Thank God. Amen. We was welcome right back at the table again. Somebody say amen. And thank God God don't carry some big bat trying to hit you over the head, amen, hand it to you to hit. But thank God, amen, he puts them loving arms around you, amen, and close you again. And I say thank God I can identify with that today. Best homecoming meal I ever had. Felt alive again in Christ Jesus. Here's the sad thing. I'm about done, believe it or not. Took half a day to get there, but sitting there that day, it took half a day to get there, four or five hours, but I'm about done here in 15 minutes. You never know. Sometimes you get something and you ever look at my notes, I'll be able to take one point and dwell on it 15 minutes, you know, and it may not, who knows what it'll be. But here's the sad thing. There's a few of us here today, maybe, I don't know, that this just hits home part way. And you say, what do you mean, Brother Jimmy? Well, you know what it's like. Amen, to feel God's goodness and His mercy and His love and His joy and His peace. You know what it's like to pull up to God's table and eat be full and plenty and amen, be hungry. You know what it's like. You know what that was like. Amen, you, you know what it's like, amen, to feel his comfort and his joy and, 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 and being in the presence of the Father's arm. But, but you also know what it's like to waste it. by getting in the place that you ought not be. And you know you ought not be there. And you've come to yourself, you realize where you're at. And you know what you need to do. You know what you could have again and what you need to have again. But the problem is, instead of being like the prodigal son and starting off to the father's house amen to repent get back in fellowship with God you just stand there you may be here today but you've never let him put them arms around you you've never said Lord I, I'm unworthy you never humbled yourself and got back into fellowship with the Lord. It's time to come home. You know they ain't nothing out there for you. You know that just as well as I know it. You know where you're you know where you are, and, and you can't ride the fence. You may think you can ride the fence, but you can't ride the fence. It's time this morning to come home. Just like the father was looking for the prodigal son, he's looking for you. I don't know who you are. I have... You know, I'm here to tell you, I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are that needs to come. But I'm here to tell you today, it was no mistake. I sat down and had done pulled that guiding document to look over it and go over my scriptures and make sure all none of those things was wrong. Amen. We'd had a board meeting and set this date to do it. Going to have one tonight to go over those results to begin that process. But God said, no. It's time for somebody to come home.
They know where they're at. You, the vast majority of you has been exactly where they're at this morning. You've been right there and looked up and found yourself in this old troubling world and came to yourself and said, Hey, I don't need to be here. I need to be over there. Now you've done made it this far this morning. It's time for you to walk back into the Father's arms. It's time for you to feel His goodness and His mercy and His grace and His love. It's it's time for you to feel that comfort when He pulls you up. It's time for you to feel alive again in Christ Jesus. It's time for you to get clean, get right with God. In just a moment, every head bowed, every eye closed. I don't know if I hit all these points and things that we had and I about got lost in there. But I can tell you this. I know the Father's looking this morning. I feel it. There's somebody that needs to come home. You've made it this far it's time to repent it's time to get back in faith it's time to enter back into the father's arms it's time to feel alive again in Christ Jesus it's time if I could walk up here into the Father's arms for you, I would, but I can't do that. You see, we have a personal relationship. Maybe you was here this morning, you didn't realize where you was at until you heard this message. You figured just how unalive you felt in God. You may have not actually went bound into the sewer of this old world, but but you realize you're not where you're at this morning. need to be this morning. You need to have a little talk with the Lord. You're, you and God's the only people that know that. Now I'm going to pray. And if you need to come and have a little talk with Jesus, I'm here to tell you that He is here. is open. And his eyes are upon you. And he desires you today. Don't let me get done with that prayer. There's no sense. It's time to lay pride aside. We've all had to lay our pride down from one time to another in our Christian life. It's time to lay pride aside and have a little talk with the Lord. Most righteous Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your spirit, and your grace. Lord, may we all realize that we've all that most of us here today has been right down this road. And Lord, I ask you right now, Lord, that those that have been down that road, Lord, if they've been in again to pray. Lord, to give those that 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 need to come down the rest of the way of the road the courage to take that next step. Lord, to enter into the Father's hand. Lord, we ask you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you'd reach down. Lord, that they'd come to themselves. Lord, I believe they've already come to themselves. They know what they need to do, Father. But, Lord, it's a matter of laying down their pride and saying, I've sinned, Lord. Forgive me. It's a matter of of saying I'm not where I need to be. Lord, I've come to renew this morning. Lord, I ask you to give them that courage. And Lord, we ask it all. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. It's up to you this morning, I know. There's a lot of points in this message could have been made. I went from about every different angle on this thing. But whoever I'm preaching to this morning, they know it. They've heard it many a time. And they just need to lay down their pride and come on. It's up to you. You know, if you know me pretty well, I'm not coming to get you. You're the own, you're the own free moral agent with God. It's up to you this morning. It's time to come home. You know that father sitting there. Tell me he was constantly looking. Don't you know today if you're out of fellowship where you need to be with God, God's constantly looking. He's constantly reaching. He's the only one to pull you out of the mess you're in. You didn't mean to get there. There's none of us ever meant to get there. I didn't mean to get there. But I got there. You didn't mean to get there, but you got there. But it's time to come home today. Come home. It's time. It's time to lay down your pride. How many of you admit to me right now that you you had a time that you you had to lay down your pride and come home? Will you do that? They need to see your hand in there right now. They need to see it there. They need to see your hand in there. Calling a sinner. What about what are you going to do? God's done reach out to you in such a way this morning. He spoke to you. You feel that conviction right now. I know somebody does. I know you do. I don't know who you are, but I know you do. It's time right now to lay down your pride and come on. She's going to sing one more stanza. If the Lord let me, I'll close. If you won't, well, then we won't close. You're Why not going to fix should it. we tarry with Right here is the only way to fix it. You're not pleading. going to fix it. The devil loves the life to you. Pleading for you and I'll get this done, and then I'll do it. No. Why you need to do it right now. The Lord is dealing with you this morning. It's the time to do it. The devil will feed you with every lie he can. He's the father of all lies. It's time right now. It's time to make it right. The Lord ordained this moment, right now, this second, this time for you. He knew where you'd be set. What are you going to do with it? Calling, oh sinner, come home. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. I know this has not been a message of salvation, but I'll leave that home to you. Say, Brother Jimmy, you didn't preach. I know I didn't. You're right. Salvation's the easy thing. You're welcome this morning. If the Lord convicted you that way, I watching for you and for me. You've got to believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth.
with your mouth. It's all Lord, resolved. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. So, whether you're, calling you've been born again and you need to get back right with the Lord, this altar is open. If you're lost today, this altar is open. It's up to you. It's up to you. God's knocked on your door. He's laid it in your lap by my hand this morning. It's up to you what you do with it. It's up to you. I really feel there may be another. What are you going to do? It's time. Oh, for the wonder. You feel cold and indifferent? If it don't make no difference to you whether you read your Bible, if it don't make no difference to you whether you, amen, go to church, if it don't make no difference to you whether you get in the presence of the Lord or not, you're in trouble, people. Though we have seen, you may not realize it or not, but you're in trouble. If it don't make no difference to you, you're in trouble. Pardon you may not fall and way down there and got, got down in the panels of sin, but you're still in trouble. Come home. Oh, come home. If you can't tell it. Ye who are weary, come home. If you don't miss it, you're in trouble. Earnestly tell you you're in trouble. Jesus is calling. Starts out the same way for everybody. It's just a little bit. Just a little. It's just a little. Well, I don't need to do that. I don't need to do this. Starts out with the little things. Then glory to God, it gets to the big one. Where it really do, it don't matter. It don't make no difference to you whether you're at the house of God or not. It don't matter to you if you miss two or three services. It felt so funny for me not to be here Sunday. It felt like it'd been forever. It feel like you, you've been forever. I'm telling you, what are you going to do with it? God's laid it in your hands. For some reason, I was just about, I was just about ready to close. Lord knows what he's doing. She's going to sing one more. Why should we tarry? You will never fix it. When Jesus is pleading. I want you to know that. Right now, the devil's telling you, you're telling yourself, I really feel this from the Holy Spirit. Amen. That this is the words that's going through your mind right now. I'll fix it. I'll get there. You will not get there. You can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens you. But you can do nothing of yourself. For you and now you can do it through him, but you can't do it without him. You can do it through him, but you can't do it without him. It's a lot easier with him than it is without him. It's time right now. It's time right now. Right now. Right now. It's time right now. Right now. What are you going to do? God's laid in your lap. Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home, come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home. 
Jesusly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. Say this last thing and I'll close in prayer. We'll, we'll close, but I will say this last thing, give you that opportunity because it popped into my mind. That's his. Not to say anything about anything, but I'm going to tell you what the greatest torment of hell is. The Bible says there's a great gulf fixed between here and there. So apparently you're going to be able to see all the joys of heaven knowing that you could be there. And having to relive every time that you had an opportunity to make it right. To me, that's going to be the greatest torment of hell, knowing all the opportunities the Lord spoke to your heart. After we walk out this door today, this altar's open to you and even after. We've started praying over the prayer box. We want to pray for our children and all the requests. Amen. It's in there. At the end of every service, it's hard for old, some of our older people to get up the stairs anymore. And it's hard, you know, it's hard to the prayer room. So we've changed that to here. So if you would, anybody that could and would and join us in prayer, we're going to pray over the prayer box. <clears throat> how many of you know how badly we need to pray for our children today? What all they face in their schools, around them. The morals that's been proclaimed in our country are nowhere near what they ought to be. Somebody say amen on that because it's true. But if you'll come join us together, we'll have a word of prayer. Don't you forget, this altar is open for you.